Hello and welcome to our little chat. Uh, we wanted to bring to you what we do weekly, which is sit down, talk about the market, talk about what's going on, the issues that we're running into, how we're solving them. Um, we do it for our team and we wanted to bring it to you. On our team today is Jim Marshall. Um, he has a distinguished title of, what, how do you say, emeritus? Oh boy, Realtor Emeritus. Emeritus, I always say it wrong. Um, which means what? It means that I've been in the business for more than 40 years. Wow. And you've been a broker of the time, how long? Oh boy, let's see. So uh, 41 years that's with a broker's license. Awesome. So he's a wealth of information. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to do a video on it, um, contact you directly, any questions that you might have, um, and any topics that you want us to cover. We are open to ideas and suggestions. And then Taryn, you've been on our team for, it's been a couple months now. We're mm -hmm. so excited to have you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you've been in real estate for a couple years now. Yes, I have. Mostly on the back end. So you've dealt with a lot of processing yes. and um, getting through the back end of mm -hmm. all the stickiness that can happen. Right? Yeah, all of the back end, all of the listing input side, yeah, yeah. Um, processing end, just making sure the transaction runs smoothly. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about um, what is really crazy lately is the market um, and it's not just here we are in communication with agents throughout the country and everyone is dealing with um, what would be commonly called an inventory shortage there's just no inventory so everyone keeps saying that and we're going to talk about what does that mean um, what does it mean for you what does it mean for our buyers our clients our sellers and for the economy um so Jim, have you ever seen this before like what we're seeing right now no. Can you no. talk on that a little? Yeah, I, I think uh, right now in Ocean City, um, and I mentioned that market specifically because that's basically where I mm -hmm. have my expertise mm -hmm. um, and can talk about MLS and listings and solds. So we have less than 175 properties to offer you for sale right now, which so is about oh, 400 less than we would actually mm -hmm. have at this time right. of year. In, in pretty much any past year, going back as, as far as I can remember. There's generally 600, 650. Uh, right, and then some years at this time, we would have 800 listings mm -hmm. or more. So. Uh, Getting ready to gear up for summer. It's not, <laughs> we're not even there yet. We're not even like, you know, we just got done the Super Bowl in February and now it's like March. Mm -hmm. So this is when we start to get busy. So it's not even like getting busy yet. So how do you think that's affected the market and what do you think is happening? Oh boy. Well, it means that if, if you're a buyer, you have got to be ready to buy. Yeah. Cause you are going to be in severe competition, no matter, no matter what price range you're looking at, no matter what kind of property, how many bedrooms, and it's not just Ocean City. It, it is everywhere. When it's I, everywhere. I talk to people from Vineland, mm -hmm. you talk to people from Galloway, all up and down the coast, Texas, not just New Jersey. Tennessee. <laughs> it's um, even New York, where people are like leaving New York, and it's still there's no inventory. So it's it's crazy. People want people want to buy. Yeah. And uh, interest rates are really good right now. So uh, I, I would say you know be prepared. You know, cash buyers, you have an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and expect that you're going to pay full price. Right. So. You know, it's like the suggestions, suggested starting your price at this point. Like yeah. we've seen, I know we've had offers then where we're like, this is really, really strong, like borderline crazy. You know, is this really what we're doing? Yeah, we're doing it. And then it just gets blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Like, do you think the market can sustain it? Do you think that the prices are going to be too high? I know people talk, they compare it to 2005. Like, yeah. do you think it's similar? I don't, I feel like it's not similar, but I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, 2005, 2004. Then there's been other times where all of a sudden prices would, would skyrocket. They would, they would just take off mm -hmm. uh, supply and demand. And I'm sure there are, there are factors out in the market that are going to control us from getting totally unrealistic right. with this appraisals yeah you have to be smart mm -hmm. as you're a buyer you know there there's got to be a limit as to how much you want to pay because if interest rates go up it's going to change your ability to sell in the future mm -hmm. so that's uh, where we try to to come in and help you out and and bear in mind that you if you are getting a mortgage you're still gonna have to deal with an appraiser mm -hmm. and they've got to be able to support you know any sale prices they come up against mm -hmm. so 
They're not just going to say, okay, this is your price. I'll give you the money. Those days are over. No, if, if, you, yeah. if you're putting 20% down, hopefully you've got enough that you could put down 25 if the appraisal doesn't come in. Cash over appraisal. It doesn't mean the property is not worth what you're paying in today's market. It just means the banks are going to say, hey, we need to be conservative. We've been through mm -hmm. crazy markets before where things accelerated real fast. Right. So. so let's touch on that. So do you think that the interest rates have a lot to do with people being willing to bid over asking like do you think that's giving them more confidence because the buying power obviously has changed right, right? so right. someone who could only afford five hundred thousand and this price point is now able to afford significantly more um, because the interest rates are lower so that really does affect the payment correct and absolutely that's, that's yeah. giving everyone more power and it's also why so many people have been refinancing the last few years mm -hmm. and so now they said you know, if I've got investments, uh, now's the time maybe to use that to get involved in, in real estate. Right. So, yeah, interest rates are just incredible. I mean, yes. But they're still not as strong as the cash buyer. So the cash buyer is able to determine their own terms, basically. So you're not restricted by what the bank is requiring. Um, they're not restricted by appraisal. You can do an appraisal. Um, you can do an inspection. You can do all the things that you would normally do. And we highly suggest to our cash buyers all of these things. Um, but the truth is, it's not dependent upon it. So if you decide that you got the appraisal on your cash buyer and it comes in low and you're still willing to take that chance, you're able to do so. Um, so we're seeing a lot of investors still in the market um, and still competing because they know that there's such a strong demand that on the flip side, if they're looking to flip the property or to even rent it out due to the lack of inventory, people are even looking to rent. Um, so investors are still out there competing, you know, because a lot of them are cash buyers. So they're still competing with the primary and secondary home market. So it's been a little crazy. It's been very crazy. Yeah. No matter no matter whether you're representing buyers or sellers, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a new market for everyone. So we're, we all learn together, but that's real estate. Right. You know, there, there's always something new. And then as far as selling. Um, it's a great time to be a seller. <laughs> I Everyone, see a lot of people getting multiple offers, so you know, highest and best going in the first 24 hours of a property being Absolutely. listed. You know, so from a buyer's standpoint, it's you know making sure you're prepared with mm -hmm. you know pre-qual, um, pre-approval. Actually, right. there's a difference between a pre-qual and a pre-approval, right. and the pre-approval is actually stronger. Right. So we really want our buyers to be ready and able and willing to move quickly um, in order to be competitive in this market. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that we do yeah. for them. Yeah, and keeping um, in mind that these sellers are, you know, getting multiple offers on their mm -hmm. property within a day or two right. and already looking all of them over. And you, know. you have to like put them on a spreadsheet because it gets extremely yeah. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that some, some people are like, well, what do I need an agent for if it's so easy to sell your house right now? And we want to kind of talk, touch on that too. Like, why do they need an agent if it's so easy to sell your home? I mean, it, the there's an endless list of things, but what do you think? Like, what would you tell someone that is telling you, why do I need an agent right now to sell my house? Okay, so <laughs> yeah. believe me, there's a, whole lot, yeah. there's a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes in, in helping sellers to sell their house. It's mm -hmm. not just, wow, here's someone that wants to buy my house right. and they made me an offer. That's just the beginning of the process. Yeah, we'll write it down in a napkin, do a handshake, oh. you know, no problem. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of hoops that have to be jumped through. There's a, a lot of I's to be dotted, T's to be crossed, and you need to be represented. You know, have somebody that knows real estate. Uh, a buyer comes in and says he's pre-qualified. Well, he may have gotten pre-qualified by some mortgage company they found mm -hmm. on the internet you know Before minnesota you mining a car and some furniture right. and, yeah. and yeah there's a lot uh, so you have to know what to look for but for instance the difference between a pre-qual and a pre-approval um you know what makes a buyer qualified how do you know letting strangers into your house is only the beginning you know um having to rearrange your schedule in order to accommodate buyers and also i think there is something that needs to be said about the buyer that's looking for a for sale by owner is looking for a deal, I think. Don't yeah. you think that buyer is like, just like the for sale by owner is typically trying to, you know, every dollar counts, every dollar matters.
So you're obviously very, very focused on your bottom line. And I have a feeling that most people that are willing to buy for sale by owner that are specifically looking for that um, are looking for a deal. Um, so what would you say to that buyer? Like how, how are you gonna deal with that buyer? And how do we make sure, you know, what do we change for you that brings, you know, more buyers to your property? You do a lot of our marketing, you know. I think, um, yeah, marketing has a huge. great, you know, impact on just getting the word out there and, you know, throwing your home on Zillow is great, but it doesn't always, you know, I extend to, to, right, like it doesn't always extend to, you know, the buyer you're looking for if you're a seller. So I think a lot of the time marketing comes into play just because it has a bigger reach of people mm -hmm. and it gets the word out quicker and, you know, you know, stronger than just putting it up on Zillow as a for sale by owner or just putting, you know, sign on your front lawn. Right. It's great for people walking by, but, you but know. But in Ocean City in the winter. Right, there's, there's not too many people. people walking by. So it's not getting the exposure that it could be. You know, when you're listing it with a brokerage and a realtor, it's it's getting the exposure it needs to make sure that we get it out there to the right people to get you the highest number. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we use so many mediums to do so. Um, we put it on the MLS, which syndicates to a lot of different sites that people are looking at. They're on Zillow, they're on Realtor.com, they're on Homes.com every single day, searching the market, especially in this market, because if you don't jump on it, um, then you've missed it already. If it's two days, three days in, I, I'm literally not calling the agent to see if it's available. I'm calling them and saying, how many offers do you have on the table? Um, before I show the property, just let me know what I'm getting into. Um, but we also use every form of social media to, and then we also have built such a huge list of qualified buyers that we interact with on a regular basis who we know what they're looking for. We don't spam them. We send them only the properties that they're looking for. We get to them instantaneously so that there's no lapse in time waiting for a seller to pick it up. Um, and I think that has a lot to bring to the table. And we also offer virtual tours of the properties because most of our clients don't live in town. So it enables us to be very competitive for our buyers and fight for our buyers. Um, our clients who have obviously signed with us that um, have agreed to be loyal to us, we're very loyal to them and we are willing to fight for them to get the deal. Um, so there's a lot involved, right? Like using an agent is really important. And when everyone's telling you that your home is probably worth more now than it ever has been, is that true? Oh yeah. It is, oh, right? yeah. it really is. It sounds like such a scam, but it's so true. Um, <laughs> Especially when everyone's saying it, you're like, what are they trying to do? But no, it's it's absolutely true. Um, and they're getting, the deals are getting done too. So it's not like they're going in over asking and then it's all falling apart. We're generally seeing that they're closing over asking. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, you know, we'd love to see someone come back on the market so we get another shot at selling them, but right. uh, it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened. It hasn't. I haven't seen it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that this was insightful for you. We're open to any topics or questions that you have. Um, please contact any of us, anyone on the team. We're happy to help you. And if you do want to know what your property is worth, we would be more than happy to sit down with you and discuss options, timing, and what's involved. So have a great weekend. Have a great week. We hope that you've enjoyed this and that it was insightful for you.